Hello, I'm Karen Pascal. I'm the Executive Director of the Henry Nouwen Society. Welcome to a very special episode of Henry Nouwen, Now and Then. We invite you to share the daily meditations in these podcasts with your friends and family. Through them, you can help reach our spiritually hungry world with Henry Nouwen's writings, his encouragement, and of course, his reminder that each of us is a beloved child of God. This is 2021, a brand new year. In the midst of the pandemic storm that engulfs the world, how we long for new beginnings and for hope. And as the old year was ending, we offered a very special gift. It was a very intimate interview with Henry Nouwen, sharing on the theme of how to be the beloved. If you missed this, go to our website and you'll be able to access this podcast. Today, as we begin the new year, we are offering a second podcast in this series featuring Henry Nouwen. Originally, Henry recorded this talk for his two dear friends, Franz and Amika. The three had been together for a visit in 1991, and throughout the weekend, Henry overflowed with ideas and visions that were currently shaping his spirituality. Franz and Amika encouraged Henry to take time to record what he was processing. Fortunately, that's exactly what he did. Today, we want to share with you the second recording Henry made, and he titled it himself, Becoming the Beloved. It is a gem that I hope will inspire you as you head into this new year. The first tape I made for you was basically a tape around being the beloved, but I, I now like to speak a little bit about becoming it and, and develop some more ideas around it. And you know, it's interesting that, um, uh, you know, I am a priest and I've lived life as a priest for many years. And I love being a priest, but quite often I've used words that um, that that I used quite casually, you know, as if um, as if they were obvious. Uh, but um, this is a time in my life that I rediscover words that I've used a lot, but not always fully understood. So, four words that I've used a lot, every day, every day, are the word to take, to bless, to break, and to give. Because I use these words when I took bread, you know, in the Eucharist, for instance, I, I take bread, I bless bread, I break bread, and I give bread. You know, when I do that, as Jesus did, he, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. And it's interesting that these words uh, are used three times in, in the Gospel of Luke. You know, at the story of the multiplication of bread, when there is this large crowd of people hungry after having listened to Jesus for a long time and the disciples want to send him away because they don't have anything to eat and Jesus um, receives bread from a little boy that's there and uh, five loaves as they say and he takes them he blesses them he breaks them and he gives them to the people and he multiplies and, and the same four words you hear at the Last Supper. He just took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it. And you see these same words at the story of the two disciples who are walking to Emmaus. And when these disciples have invited Jesus into their home, uh, Jesus takes bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, he gives them. And they recognize him in these these gestures. So these four words I've used a lot, a lot, but I, I don't think I've ever fully understood their meaning. And so, so what I want to do is to tell you a little bit about these four words that may help us to, to live our life as a life of the beloved and to become the beloved more fully. 
Um, first of all, I, I just want to let you know that I, I, I think these four words summarizes in a way the life of Jesus. You know, he was taken, blessed, broken, and given. That's that's the life of Jesus. Jesus was taken by God, yes. chosen by God, and sent into the world. He was blessed by God. God blessed Jesus. You know, you can see that very much in these words that were spoken after the baptism uh, in the Jordan, but also the words that were spoken on the Mount Tabor. You, know, you are my beloved. That's a blessing. And Jesus was broken by God, broken on the cross. That's, that's the great mystery. God accepted the suffering of Jesus. And that he, he handed his son over to suffering. So Jesus was broken. But he was taken, blessed and broken to be given to the world, to be given to the world as food for the world. Yeah? So these four words, first of all, in a way summarizes the whole mystery of, of who Jesus is as the, ch the child of God. And I, I believe is it, if it is true that we are also called to be children of God, sons and daughters of God, you know, that is our life too, a life of being taken, blessed, broken, and given. And so I, I, I want to say a little bit about each of these four words, because I think if we become aware of, 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 of these realities that these words represent, then, then we can become the beloved more fully, because we, we, we start living some things that we originally weren't able to, to live because we didn't know where it was happening, so to say. So first of all, to be the beloved means first of all that we are taken. And 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 I, I like another word actually, a little better. Chosen is better. We are chosen. We are chosen. And if we claim our chosenness, and if we see it in our everyday life, then we can become more fully the beloved. Because the first quality, characteristic, I would say, of the beloved is that he is the chosen one. I really like that word, being chosen. And it's a very interesting word because in our society, to be chosen is... Um, means to be uh, chosen for a special role in contrast to others. You know, you, you, you know that quite well, that, um, for instance, um, if somebody is chosen for a reward, then others are not chosen. Not everybody can be chosen. And uh, the interesting thing of being chosen is precisely in our world that others are not and uh, if you're chosen too bad for the rest you know if you're not chosen too bad for you but anyhow i remember you know as a kid how how painful it was i was never chosen for the football team and i felt rejected i felt um, i felt uh, not chosen i, I felt uh, left alone put aside all that now, what I would like to say is that when we say that we are the chosen ones of God, that that doesn't mean that others are not chosen. It doesn't mean that at all. In fact, the more we are in touch with our chosenness, the more we are able to see the chosenness of other people. And that is something we are in this world that is so full of competition and comparisons and all that. That's not very, um, very easy to grasp. But the mystery of a spiritual life is 
that when you become more and more aware of your chosenness, you will have eyes to see the chosenness of others. What does it mean to be chosen? To be chosen means to be seen in your uniqueness. You are a unique person. You are special in my eyes. And I tell you, that is something that uh, we need to know. Because we're very tempted to think about ourselves as um, not very unique, not very special. I know, I remember people who said, well, you know, I'm, I'm just one of the many. I've even talked to people who said, well, you know, I came in this world because of some, some fluke, of some accident. You know, my parents weren't even planning to have another child, but, but here I was. So they didn't really want me, and here I am. Some people walk around in this world with the feeling of not being chosen, not being seen in the individuality. That's a very deep pain. not being special in the eyes of the lover, not being special in the eyes of, of people. They, they feel very, very much um, undesired, unwanted, just one of the crowd, uh, things like that. And uh, it belongs to the essence of the beloved, to be the chosen one. I have chosen you from all eternity. I have seen you in your uniqueness. It's really important. And it's important because it helps us also to no longer compare ourselves to others. No, I'm chosen, I'm unique. It doesn't mean I'm like everybody else. It only means that I have my life to live and nobody else is called to live the same life. I'm unique. I have a role to fulfill in this world that is unique because God has sent me into this world to fulfill uh, the task he has given me. But it's a different task than other people's task. And it's important to, to, to be aware of that. That I am unique in God's eye. I am chosen. I am loved in my individuality. I am not like others. And I might feel uh, that others do certain things better or certain things uh, worse. But that's not important. The point is that I have my own unique call in life. And I have to live that. But that's not because I am. I, in it's not. It's not because I come out well in comparison to other persons, but it bec because I have been seen by God in my uniqueness and chosen. Mm. And the beautiful thing about it, as I said earlier, is that once I'm in touch with that, I can can really encourage other people, because I see that they are unique too but it's no longer a, a threat to me. I'm not saying, oh my goodness, he's much better than I, or, or whatever. And, and No, 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 I just enjoy the goodness of others, the beauty of others. Okay. And the second quality of the life of the beloved is that the beloved is the blessed one. I, you know, I really think that's very important. That you and I and, and we, we, we realize that we are blessed, blessed. You know, you know the word blessed in Latin means, um, come from, sorry, it comes from uh, benediction. You know the word benediction, benediction, it's blessing. And the word benediction really means bene, which is good, 
and diction come from dicher means to say. To bless means to say good things about somebody. To bless somebody is to say good things about the person. And um, I, I, I hope that that makes sense to you. We have to, to be aware that good things are being said about us by God, by the lover, by the one who has chosen us. Good things are being said about us. You are good. You are my favorite one. I look at you with, with eyes of love. You, know, you, you, you I, I bless you. I say good things about you and I keep saying good things about you. So and that is very important for, for, for that we, we are aware that we are blessed. And I tell you, I, I feel more and more there are many people who don't realize how blessed they are. They don't, they're not in touch with their blessing or they don't feel they are blessed. Many children don't feel blessed by their parents. Many people don't feel blessed by their, by their friends or by their colleagues. As you know, I, I, I'm living in a community with mentally handicapped people in Toronto. That's where I am. And, um, and I've told you a little bit about it. But um, in that community, people really need to be blessed often. They need to hear good things about them because in their mental uh, pain, they uh, they constantly uh, lose touch with their goodness. And they feel cursed often. I'm a burden. I'm a burden. They often feel. I'm a burden for my parents, I'm a burden for my friends, I'm a burden for society, I, I can't make money, I can't do anything useful, or whatever. And so they don't, they don't feel or they don't know themselves blessed. And let me tell you a little story that really has moved me immensely. I mean, a few months ago I was um, in Toronto in a, in a house for mentally handicapped people. And one of the people, her name is Janet, said to me, Henry, uh, would you uh, please bless me? And I, I didn't know exactly what she meant and what I did. I gave her a little, put a little cross on her forehead with my finger. And, and she didn't uh, respond very well to that. She says, oh, no, no, that doesn't work. It doesn't help me. <laughs> and I, I want a blessing. And I, I said, well, I just give you a blessing. She said, no, 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 that's, that, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I said, well, what does he want, you know? But anyhow, so I, I, I went to the service that I was asked to lead, and I, we had the service, and after it, I said, Janet has asked for a blessing, and maybe um, he can tell me what she really wants. And this was interesting. When I said that, he immediately stood up and walked right up to me. Now, I was standing in the circle of people, and I had a white long help on a, a, a long gown, so to say, and, um, and she put her head against my chest and I sort of put my arms around her uh, and the sleeves, these big sleeves of that gown just covered her completely. And so she was totally hidden, so to say, in my embrace and, and I, that's what she really wanted. She wanted to to feel safe in my arms. And um, uh, what was so important was that um, uh, at that moment she, 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 she wanted me to say good things about her. So I, I held her in that embrace and I said to her, Tiana, do you know how much you loved? Do you know how much I care for you? Do you know how important you are? The people who are here really love you. You're really important. You're really very, very special. We, we love you. 
and 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 then I, I sort of made her look me in the face and I looked at her straight in the eyes and then and then I said to her Janice Janet uh, you you really wonderful person and she sat smiling and she sat smiling smiling and and then she she walked back to her place now that that was a blessing and the amazing thing was when I had blessed her that way everybody else started to smile and quite a few of the handicapped people put up their hands and said can I have a blessing too <laughs> and so we all came up and then finally finally uh, some of the non-handicapped people I mean the assistants said listen you know you don't have to be handicapped to be blessed I mean I, I, I need some I need a real blessing too because I I need to hear things about myself that give me courage and hope and so so one of the the men, 24 year old guy, strong and big, and came very healthy looking, came up to me and stood right in front of me. And I I I, I said, John, you you want a blessing? He said, Yes. So I put my hand on his shoulder. I said, You're blessed. And so blessings are I. Words we need to hear to give us courage to live well and to, to know that we are the beloved. And I, I tell you, once we, we know that, once we, we hear good things about ourselves, we are able to say good things to each other. We need to bless each other. That's really important. And we need to say to each other, you're a good person and not you know it doesn't mean give compliments to each other I mean that's a whole different thing you know a little you're special in the sense of you can do something that others cannot do or or a little trophies or a little that that's not what I mean blessing is to 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 help people become aware of their goodness and the basic humanity their basic goodness it has nothing to do with compliments or little little uh, uh, you know, little um, affirmations of saying, well, you know, you did a well, good job here, or not so far, or good job there, or this is unique, or applause, or any of that. That's not it. Blessing is it's much more deeper. It comes from this is calling people good. You are blessed. And it's important that we, 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 we start discovering where blessing come because if we are not in touch with our blessedness we start living as the cursed one as if we are cursed as if uh, and it's not as if bad things are being said about us and you know and in our world that's constantly the great temptation that we we um, we think we are cursed we are no good and and, and um, and that keeps um, keeps tempting us to think um, you're no good. Now the third word is broken. We are broken. And I, I, I want to say something about that to you because I, I, I really feel that, uh, that it's very important that we have an understanding of our brokenness. We are broken, uh, and and each human being is broken. And you 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 might be very concrete about that yourself if you think about it. I'm very broken. I know I know where where I'm not well together. I know where I am um, not making it, or I know where I am. Um, um, uh, not together, and uh, you know, and 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 each of us and uh, experience our brokenness in, in unique way. And and lately, I'm more and more aware that the human brokenness um, is mostly connected with relationships. You know, relationship with. Um, friends, with husband, or with wife, or with children. And people suffer enormous amount of brokenness in the relationship. 
people have a broken heart quite often because they, they would so much like to have a good relationship with a person that doesn't work and, and they can talk to a certain person or they cannot um, feel comfortable in a certain situation and they, they, they realize, you know, I, I, I'm broken, I can fix it, I can make it, I'm broken. And each person is broken in a different way, in a unique way. And our, we experience our brokenness often as, um, as something that makes us very lonely. Because nobody else seems to be able to really understand us fully in our brokenness. And that's true. You know, we are also very unique in our brokenness. You don't have to say, well, my, my brokenness or my pain is not so terrible because some people else has uh, a greater pain. Uh, we are unique in our brokenness and we are very lonely there. Very, very lonely. Very lonely. Yeah. And I, I, if I think about my brokenness, I, I often have to realize that, that where I'm most broken, I'm also most alone. I'm least understood. I am really, really by myself, and I cannot always uh, find the, the, the total understanding that I would like to. And so, brokenness um, is something very, very personal, very intimate, very deep. And, and we live in a society that, that sort of wants to fix brokenness, to say, let's do something about it and get you back in shape. Well, but most of our brokenness that's very deep, you know, cannot be fixed. It's part of our being. We experience it as something that you can just simply do something about. I, mean, I, I realize, for instance, what I most suffer from are things that have been with me as long as I can remember. My, my, my whole way of being. I suffer from things that, um, that, that are so deep that I, I, I can just do away with it, so to say, and I have to, so, so, be very personal. And one of the, one of the great challenges is, is that, is how can I embrace my brokenness? How can I befriend my brokenness, instead of trying to fix it, to, to, uh, to heal it, to make it right away better? The great, the great challenge that I have is to embrace my brokenness, to befriend my brokenness, to not run away, to not avoid it, to not do as if it doesn't exist, but to, to, to welcome in a certain way my own brokenness and say, that's also me. I'm unique, but also unique in my brokenness. And I, uh, I have to, to, to live it as, as something that belongs to me. And, 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 and I, 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 I want to, 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 to acknowledge it, to look it in the eyes and say, yes, that's me. That's me. I, I am wounded. I am broken. I suffer. I suffer when people say certain things about me or to me. Or I suffer uh, when I cannot express myself the way I want to express myself. I suffer in my sexuality. Uh, because I, I just, just have feelings and emotions that that I I don't know how to how to deal with and I'm lonely in these feelings. And I suffer in my uh, my um, uh, inability to, to accomplish certain things that I so much desire. I, you know, there are all these uh, I suffer in, in my inability to say to my wife or to my children or to my husband what, what, what I really want to say. I mean, each one has 
I, I wish I could, 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 could say what was in my heart, but I can't. There was enormous suffering. And I, I wish I could, could reestablish this communication. I can't do it. I just don't even know where to start. And I suffer from my incapability. But, but, but I think as the beloved children of God, we, we call to embrace our brokenness and to put it under the blessing. That's an important word. To put our brokenness under the blessing. You know, quite often we live our brokenness under the curse. We say, I'm no good, and you look what happens. There's all these terrible things are happening to me, and that proves I'm no good. That proves I am, I am no good. So we said, living our brokenness as an argument for our curse. And we say, I always felt I was no good. I never dared to say it, but now I know it very clearly, and I'm no good. And I think it's, uh, that's an enormous temptation to live our brokenness under the curse. And if we love, live our brokenness under the curse, a little brokenness is enough to destroy us. Our brokenness can, can really pull us right down. And so what we have to do is to say, no, I'm going to live my brokenness as the beloved, as the blessed one. I'm going to put it under the blessing. So that my brokenness can become a, uh, uh, a brokenness that, uh, that leads me to new life. That is a brokenness that, that, that helps me to, to grow. Jesus speaks about it a lot, you know. He, he says... Didn't you know that the Son of Man had to suffer and so enter into his glory? You know, if we translate that, we could say, didn't you know that, that the brokenness that we have is a way to new life, to, is, can, can lead us to a, to, to a greater intimacy with the lover who calls us the beloved, you know? Uh, that, that's the great mystery um, I remember a, a uh, scene out of the uh, the, the mass of L Leonard Bernstein you know Leonard Bernstein is the famous director you know, who died recently but uh, New York director of the New York Symphony and he composed a piece that was called the mass and um, there was a, in in that it was like a, an opera, an opera piece, and, and you saw the whole group of people forming a pyramid, and on top of the pyramid was a priest, beautifully vested in golden vestments, and he was carrying in his hand a, a big glass chalice, and he was sort of on a pedestal, you could say. And suddenly the whole pyramid fell, fell apart. All the people ran off. And, and the priest came down and fell down right from the, from the top of the pyramid to the floor. And he was stripped from all his vestments. And, 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 and he, he was left there in his blue jeans and his t-shirt. And he looked around and all people were scattered all directions. He was totally, totally confused. And, while he was walking on, on, the, on the floor, I mean, and, and he, he suddenly noticed that the chalice that he had been carrying was broken in many, many pieces. And he looked and he looked. And uh, as he looked, he said, I never realized that broken glass can shine so brightly. I never realized that broken glass can shine so brightly. And he stood there fixed on that, that glass of the broken chalice. And these words really, really have always spoken to me that, that 
that our brokenness can suddenly become a source of light. It can shine brightly and it can open us to the light. You know? and, uh, but only when we live it under the blessing, only when we live it as, as people who trust that we are the beloved and who, who, who can say yes, as I suffer and if I go through this difficult time, I, I, I'm, I'm becoming more and more aware um, that I am the beloved. My pain also brings me closer to the knowledge of who I truly am, the blessed one, the beloved. And then uh, finally there is this word given. We are blessed, we are broken to be given. And um, I, uh, I want to say something about it. That our life is a life for others. Our life is a life in which we are called to, to give ourselves to others. And one of the things that I'm becoming more and more aware of is that, um, that our deepest desire of our heart is to give ourselves to others. You know, quite often, we, we say we'll give something or we give part of this or we start thinking about what is mine to hold and what is mine to give but basically you know, the deepest desire of our life is to give ourselves to others to give ourselves away I don't know if people are aware of it, but there is a deep, deep satisfaction in giving, in giving ourselves. And by that I don't mean, mean giving presents or giving gifts, but basically giving our life, living our life for others, for our children, for our wife, for our friends, for, for people, but somewhere to trust that that we come to our greatest fulfillment by giving ourselves. I think that's something we, we, we have to learn more and more. And that we are chosen, that we are blessed and broken so that we can become food for the world, bread for the world. And that's the mystery of life, that we, we are, are created so that we can give ourselves to others and so that our life can bear fruit as we give it. I mean, that's, that's something that, uh, that is very, very mysterious. But you know, dying is the greatest act of giving. And there's a lot of dying going on in our lives, you know. We have to let go of things. We have to let go of certain expectation or certain relationships or certain successes or whatever and, and and we have to trust that as we let go of it we'll find more more joy more hope for life and um, if you talk to people who have uh, they to give themselves fully they will always talk about that as they give themselves away, they found more life. And I, I really believe that the final act of dying, the, the physical death on the end of our life, can become an act of giving. And Jesus himself speaks about that a lot. He says, it's good for you that I die, because when I die, I can give you my spirit. And my spirit will lead you to the full truth. You know? And so, that's not just true of Jesus, it's true of everybody. When we, when, we, when we give ourselves away, when we die for others, our life will bear fruit in their lives. You know, my mother died, uh, it's now 13 years ago, and, uh, and she, she gave her life, her life for her children, and, I still feel that her life is continue to bear fruit in my life. And she died for me, for her children, for her husband, for her friends. And somehow her life 
continues to uh, to bear fruit. It's an amazing mystery that uh, what we give away bears fruit. Like if the grain doesn't die, it cannot bear fruit. Jesus says that, and that's true of every life. So the dying, when it becomes a, a, a human act of giving oneself away, it, it can become really fruitful. But um, I think it's, it's not just the dying on the end of our lives, it's just the dying that happens day after day. In little things. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing how I have to die again and again. For instance, I have to die of certain feelings, let go of certain negative feelings of people. I have to, to let go of that. To trust that it will bear fruit when I, I don't cling to my own anger, to my own resentment. But let it go, let it go. You remember this story of the multiplication of bread is such a beautiful story because there's a little boy that that seems to be a useless little kid that just walks around there and then he has five loaves and he gives them to Jesus. And Jesus takes them, he blesses them, he breaks them, he gives them away and, and as he gives the bread away it multiplies, it becomes more and more and more so much there are even leftovers. You know? And that's a, a very much of a a journey that we have to make. We are little people. But when we are taken and blessed and broken, then we can be given and our life can multiply. Our own life can, can grow. The more we give away, the more it will be multiplied. And it will bear fruit far, far beyond our own knowledge. That's, a, that's an incredible uh, mystery. Our life can become a gift for others, and as a gift for others, it, it can bear fruit far beyond our own, our own fantasy, our own expectations, our own thoughts. So these four words are, are really important, I think, because they are the, the four ways in which we become the beloved. We become the beloved as we claim that we are chosen. Bec and as we um, look at other people as people who are also chosen and help them recognize their chosenness. We become the beloved as when we, we really uh, trust that we are blessed and bless others in, in return. We bless others and we start saying good things about other people. We become really the beloved when we we put our brokenness under the blessing and help other people to do the same. Help people to live their brokenness under the blessing and, and so that it can become a source of life and light. We become the beloved when we, um, we give ourselves away and help others to give themselves away. And to, to, to die the little deaths of life with generosity and graciousness and, and to even trust that our final death will be a gift, you know? I mean, and then we become the beloved, we become the beloved. And one of the, the, the disciplines of life is to recognize the taking, the blessing, the breaking, and the giving in our daily lives. To recognize it sort of as we live our lives. Because every day we, we, we can again come in touch with the fact that we are chosen. Yeah. to fight the, the, the temptation of to think about ourselves as, as um, useless or marginal. No, no, we are chosen people. And, and look, every morning if I wake up I have to choose that again and see as I'm chosen. And every day I have to, 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 to realize that I am blessed. To, to accept the blessing. Where, where do I recognize the blessing? And what people say, people visit, people come. And yeah, can I recognize blessings in that? 
Can I recognize the daily event of my life as signs in which the blessing of God becomes visible to me? And can I embrace my brokenness? Can I, can I say, yes, I'm embracing it. I'm befriending it. I, I'm not just trying to get out of it. But no, I, I am not perfect. I, am, I have my pains, but I'm not going to, to live as if I don't have them. But I, I embrace them. I recognize them. I put them under the blessing. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, yes, I can come closer to who I am and to who God is if, as I live this world. And then, um, day after day, I have this opportunity to give myself, to give myself to others in a good word, in a, in a gesture of love, in a telephone conversation, in a letter, in anything I do, I can, I can just um, say, I, I have something to give. And the more I give of myself, the more fruitful I will be. I don't have to hold on to anything. I don't have to hoard. I could give away. And you know, and, and in this sense, uh, we really can can live our life as a, as a blessing, as a joy, as, as, as a gift of God, as the beloved. And we can become more fully, you know, who we are, the beloved. So I'm going to leave it by that. And I, I hope that these four words now mean a little more to you and, and that, that you can experience them in your daily life too. So thank you for listening and many, many warm greetings to you. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We were delighted to be able to offer this wonderful recording of Henry Nouwen to you. In it, he reminded us that we are chosen, blessed, broken, and given. His call to us to embrace our brokenness and put it under the blessing is a beautiful challenge as we head into this new year. Thank you for sharing our daily meditations and these podcasts with your family and friends. And also, thank you so much for giving us a thumbs up and a good review on our podcast. This has been so helpful in connecting others to the resources that the Henry Nouwen Society has to offer. We're grateful to the Henry J.M. Nouwen Archives for the fine work they do preserving the writings, teachings, letters, and memorabilia of Henry Nouwen. And we would encourage you to visit their website and explore all the resources that are available for readers, scholars, and fans of Henry Nouwen. For more information related to today's podcast, click on the links on the podcast page of our website. You can find additional content, book suggestions, podcasts, links to the Nouwen archives, and other resources. Wishing you all a wonderful, blessed 2021. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, or follow us on social media for more Henry Nouwen content. For books, videos, and other resources, or if you'd like to receive free daily Henry Nouwen e-meditations, you can follow the links below.